Yo, what is going on everybody? I'm your host Baby Spine and today I'm coming at you guys with my best controller settings here for Smite Season 7. It doesn't matter what platform you play on, whether it's console or PC, Smite has input-based matchmaking. So wherever you use a controller, whether it be console or PC, you will be matched up against other controller players. That's just how input-based matchmaking works here in Smite. It's the same in Paladins. So, uh, with that being said, I will say playing on the PC with the controller will give you advantages over people using a controller on console. Specifically hardware advantages, and that's all. I mean, better hardware, better frame rates, better performance, better hertz. Uh, just, uh, you can change graphic settings. Let's get into some of this right now. Okay. And I'll be sure to let you guys know what applies to, uh, console and PC here as far as what you can and can't do. All right. So for starters, let's get into the settings. I'm going to grab my mouse over here. It'll be easier to kind of point and talk like a presentation. All right. So let's start with video settings. If you're on console, I apologize. You're not going to be able to mess with these consoles. Have these things locked. These these video settings locked. Uh, maybe except for like resolution or something. But uh, on PC, you can change these. I got all mine set to high. If you have a beefy rig, it's I mean, why not just set everything to high so you can see the game in its uh, best quality. And then uh, I mean, unless you have performance issues, then you might want to turn some of these down. I'm on a 1080, uh, 1920 by 1080, 60 hertz TV. That's what I'm currently using to game on. Um, I'm waiting to get a better monitor. I'm going to get it like a 240 hertz eventually. But for now, I'm just using what I got. Resolution scale, I keep it at 100. I'm full screen when you're in game. Uh, vertical sync. This is something I can do even though I am on a 60 hertz TV. I like to turn this off because it will make it to where your controller has less input delay. Like my PC essentially with V-Sync off is pumping out a lot, a lot of frame right here. But yeah, I'm getting 150. My PC is pumping out 150 FPS. So you want to turn vertical sync off if that's the case and you're on PC with a controller because you will actually get less in input delay with your controller uh, with vertical sync off. With that being said, let's get back in, in here. It, seriously, it's a huge deal. You'll see a huge difference between having it on and off if you have a powerful PC. Use Ragdoll Physics. I have that on. Particle Detail Maximum. Anti-Aliasing High. Again, these are only if you're on PC and if you have a beefy rig. You can set everything to the maximum here. But we're going to get into the actual control settings here for controller. That's what I think people are really going to be clicking the video for. Now, personally, I use Savage Plus, but by default, I believe the game is set to Berserk. Yeah, I think Berserk is the default setting here. And the only problem with Berserk is that it has all your abilities mapped to the face buttons. And that's only a problem because you generally have to look around with your right joystick. And then if you want to press an ability, you'll take your thumb off of this joystick and then you'll go to press a face button. And for that brief second that you're pressing the ability, you're no longer aiming with your right joystick. So it can lead to missing a lot of key abilities here. So what I like to do is change it over to Savage Plus. Well, here's Savage. So basically that uh, you do Savage or Savage Plus so that your abilities and your auto attack are up here on the triggers instead of the face buttons. But I actually take it a step further and go with Savage Plus because this makes it to where you can also do your ultimate with left bumper and right bumper together. If you press those uh, together, you can do your ultimate instead of having to press Y. Sometimes it's, it's okay to press Y. Like if somebody's right on top of you, you can drop your alt right on yourself. And, you know pan the camera down drop Y but a lot of the times if they're running or juking and you have to aim it's gonna be better to use the triggers like you do for the rest of your abilities on Savage okay so I would get used to Savage Plus now casting mode I use quick casting but I feel like this is preference based I'll explain why I use quick casting and the difference between uh, normal casting and instant casting quick casting is kinda of like the best of all of them in my opinion but uh, now with normal casting, the problem here is that if you go to do an ability, like let's say I want to do my ultimate. Okay, I just pressed the Y button here. 
and it pulls up a line, and then I have to confirm it with right trigger. Which isn't terrible, and if that's the way you want to play the game, go for it. But I've gotten so used to using quick casting to where, like, again, another example of normal. Like, I press my 2 here, my left bumper, and it pulls up a display, and then I can confirm it with R2. And that's fine, but a lot of the times, once you get so used to a god, you don't really need to sit there and, you know, see the diagram on the ground to see where it's going to go. You know where it's going to go. You have a ground target here we can look at as well. So let me show you. We're going to come over here and we're going to turn it on uh, quick casting. So with quick, it's a, let me, let me tell, let me explain this real quick. So with quick casting, like if I want to do my two, I'll press left bumper and it does it instantly. It does it instantly. And that is why I like quick casting because a lot of the times I don't I don't want to have to reconfirm my ability after I already pressed the button to do it. So and another thing is is with quick casting you can also if you do for whatever reason still want to see this you can hold the button like I'm doing. I'm now holding left bumper to do my two, and uh, you can release it. And when you release it, it'll do it. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. It's if you want it to still be like normal casting and you you see somebody juking around a lot and you want to just kind of hold it out for a second, you can still hold it to see that pictograph uh, display on the ground or whatever the hell you call that. And then, uh, you know, if you want to do it instantly, then you can just press the button and do it instantly. See, I didn't really have to aim to know I was going to hit this thing right here. I didn't have to sit there and, you know, normal cast it to know it was going to go there. You know it's going to go straight out. So why why not just do it instantly? It'll save you some time. It might, you know, catch the other person with their pants down. So that's why I use quick casting. Instant casting is basically the same as doing this, except there is no option to hold it and, and uh, see, like, the normal casting style if you wanted to. Instant casting will just make everything instant, where, uh, again, you won't be able to do this if you wanted to. So that's why I go with quick casting over instant and normal casting. All right. With that being said, let's move on. All right. So invert look. I turn that off. Some people have left the question in my settings videos. They're like, why is up looking down and down looking up? Well, that's because you have invert look on. You want to turn that off. Now, aim assist in this game. We will dive into that later. For now, I'm just going to say turn it off. Um, and we'll explain that in a little bit. It doesn't really help here in Smite like it would in a game like Paladins. If you're using a controller in Smite, it's different. And again, we'll talk about that in a second. Controller vibration, I keep it on. Adds a little bit of immersion. Basic attack vibration on. Jump enabled on. Restricted camera pitch off. This might be on by default. I like to turn it off, and I'll explain why. So, restricted camera pitch is whenever you can't take your camera, and you can't look up past as far as that ground target goes, it'll, it'll stop your camera pitch. But with it off, you can look all the way up. It'll kind of be like Paragon, where uh, you can look all the way down and up, and look up into the sky. And, you know, some people might be like, well, why do you want to look? Why, why would you look all the way up into the sky? Well, there's actually a lot of people that have ultimates that fly into the air, Thanatos, Ratatascor, Apollo, they go flying into the air, and a lot of the times you can just look up and kind of like track them in the air and see what they're going to do right before they hit you, pop an Aegis, save your ass, you know. So I, that's why I like to uh, look up. And then also I like it as well to come and like I like to pan my camera down when I get close to people. It just feels easier to hit people whenever I do this when we get in close range. So I like my camera pitch off um all right moving on from camera pitch let's see oh we're gonna get into some sensitivities all right so 30 that's what i'm playing on by default it's set to like 10 or 15 which is really bad um because there's just so many people that are gonna jump behind you blink behind you spin around you at close range and you're not gonna be able to turn fast enough to keep up with them like i'm turning fast here with 30 on my x okay so if you don't you're gonna want to change that so you can keep up with them i would recommend at least starting it bump it up to 20 okay and then try to work your way up higher if uh if you're comfortable enough to get it higher 
you know, I'd say somewhere between 20 and 30 is going to be uh, somewhat healthy for a controller to play competitively. Um, I play on 30. All right. Let's see. Uh, controller Y sensitivity, I have set to 10. It's so much different here than X. X is when you're turning left and right. Y is for when you're looking up and down. And now the reason I have Y set to 10 is because Y is your uh, abilities, right? So if I wanted to spray this honey, you know, I don't want this little, uh, this, this circle on the ground to be super touchy. No, because it's not like turning, it's placing a skill shot. So before I place it, you know, depending on uh, how touchy this is, could lead to you missing the ability if it's too touchy, right? So I like to, you know, keep it, keep my Y on 10. You know, when it comes to placing abilities, uh, you, you do so through the Y axis and then turning with your X. So yeah, Y doesn't need to be as touchy. Enough said. Let's move on. What else do we got? Oh, someone wanted me to talk about aim acceleration and dead zones. They recently uh, requested that I talk about this stuff. So aim acceleration, I wouldn't mess with this unless you were already somebody who played at the max sensitivity of 60 and you still felt like you were turning too slow. Then in that case, I would start adjusting your aim acceleration uh, upwards so that you could turn faster. But if you don't play at 60x, then I wouldn't recommend changing that aim acceleration from its default value. Instead, adjust your X sensitivity to turn to your, uh, you know, get your turning speed how you want it here. And again, 30 is already really touchy. Going higher than that, and you're probably never going to land autos with a hunter or a mage. So I don't really think you need to touch aim acceleration. Just my opinion. Dead state, uh, dead zone for the left and right stick. They have it set to default five and three. Now I don't really touch these because dead zone has to do with if you're using like an old controller and your joystick for whatever your joysticks are, you know, used and abused. And now whenever they're just sitting there and you know you're not, let's say you're not touching the controller, and you uh, your person starts walking or turning by themselves. Um, then in that case, you might want to look into adjusting your dead zones because that is essentially, it's like you, you see, you have your joystick, right? And if it's mo and if you see your character moving on screen, then you need to adjust the dead zone to be bigger, right? Like if they're moving and you're not touching anything or they're turning or they're walking left or moving right or something, then you would need to adjust your dead zone bigger so that it wouldn't do that. And again, this is gonna only probably apply to people with like used controllers that are old and have problems with the joysticks. For everybody else, don't touch these. I would only raise these, if again, if you're having problems with your controller turning or moving on its own. All right, and even then, I would get a new controller. Also, instead of, you know, you'd mess with your dead zones temporarily, but then you're gonna wanna get a new controller either way so that you don't have to worry about that um also the controller you're using here in smite if you're on ps4 you're using a ps4 controller if you're on xbox you're using an xbox controller if you're on the nintendo switch you're using their switch controller thing joy cons or a pro controller or whatever they have on pc you need to be using windows 10 compatible so windows 10 compatible is always going to be an xbox one controller or even like a 360 uh, controller and I would get it wired because I tried using Bluetooth I have Bluetooth on my PC and it kept dropping the connection so I just wired up wired Xbox one controller is is gonna be the way to go here my brother tried using a PS4 controller and it wasn't Windows 10 compatible on his PC and he had to go through third-party software and stuff like that to get it to work so just save yourself the hardship get yourself a wired Xbox one controller and that is all for the control settings. Now let's talk about targeting, where we are going to get more into why we have aim assist turned off. And uh, <clears throat> so for starters, this is what I'm using. Distance line, none. Bracket highlighting, off. Reticule, X. Ground target, standard. 2D ground target, uh, on. Always show ground target, on. The ground target I keep on because it helps with knowing where your skill shot is going to be placed. 
even without having to, you know, normal cast, look at it or hold it with quick cast. You can just kind of see a little circle on the ground like so. You see that circle right there. I'm looking directly at it, you know, so that circle like watch when I go to pl place my three, my three is directly around it so that's i like to keep the ground target on because you know where your ability is going to be before you even go to place it so instead of even having to hold it you could just be like you know because you are you use your ground target to do it right i like ground target so that's the one we use the standard one we keep it on now let's go over here and we're going to talk about landing auto auto attacks with ranged gods and uh some of the things you might want to consider doing here so for starters let's go back and look at the uh targeting okay so if you want a distance line here this can help with landing autos i don't use it because i don't feel like it helps me that much but i see a lot of other people that do you can turn it onto a ruler or a line i think uh what the popular thing is a ruler some people like to use so you can kind of use the ruler to measure out how far away they are and adjust your autos accordingly Another thing with doing auto attacks is that uh, you want to generally not hold down the uh, trigger button here because it'll make you miss a lot of shots if they're far away. Now, don't get me wrong. If you are around the attack speed cap like we are right now with a full build and a hive down and you're really close to the target, okay, then sure, you can go ahead and hold it down. But that's not always going to be the case. That's not always going to be the case, especially when you start a game and you don't have any attack speed and you're firing like this slow. Then you're going to want to feather your shot, treat it as semi-automatic, and just, you know, people are going to be juking back and forth a lot. This is the guy to practice it on right here, this Odin that runs side to side. There's nothing else here in the jungle practice that you could practice autos on as well. If you go over there and fight the god bot like Guan Yu or something, they're just going to run straight at you. So it's not really as you can see here that that's that's not really practicing in my opinion that's just shooting somebody running straight at you and most people are never going to run straight at you so if you want to practice landing your auto attacks it's best to do it over here on this guy now let's talk about the aim assist and why you don't want to use it now for starters we're going to go back into targeting and we're going to show you bracketed highlighting if for whatever reason you want to see your enemy's hitbox this is what you would turn on. Now, as you can see, we can see this square around him. That's his hitbox. That is his hitbox. As you can see, we're going to nail him. So if you think that's something that would help you, you can turn bracketed highlighting on. Personally, it doesn't really help me that much, and I'll tell you why. Because let's, let's turn it off real quick. All right. Now it's off. But look, notice how Odin is red whenever you are... You have you are looking at him. He uh, hi he's highlighted in red. That's the same as essentially ha uh, seeing the bracketed highlight box. Whenever you look at him, you you'll see the box around him. So because that red highlight already exists, I don't think there's any need to use the the big uh, obnoxious hitbox thing. Also, that hitbox isn't very isn't really a good indicator of how you should hit somebody. Because if you aim at the hitbox, right? Let's turn it on real quick and take a look. So if you actually aim at that hitbox, see how it missed them? Watch, I'm going to hit it. But, but what? Wait a minute. This game's doo-doo. I'm shooting at his hitbox and it's missing. Well, that's because this game isn't hit scan. You do not have hit scan auto attacks. This is not a first person shooter. This is a third person MOBA. And you actually want to shoot in the direction people are walking, not directly at them. Okay. So that's why that, 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 uh, this, um, what do you call it? Bracketed high. It's not really that beneficial. If anything, it'll throw you off. It'll make you shoot at the, at the hitbox and then they'll just dodge your attack because you're shooting directly at them. The only time that would be okay is if they were running directly towards you and not going left or right, then yeah, you could shoot directly at their hitbox and it would hit them. Or if you were like right on top of them, like we uh, showed earlier. So I don't use bracketed highlighting and, and uh, we, we went over this other stuff. So another thing to talk about is uh, let me go back over the aim assist real quick. So I keep aim assist off. It's not really no, it's not too noticeable if you turn it on, right? 
it doesn't really help. What it does is like whenever you're over the hitbox, like when they're highlighted red or the bracket pops up, if you're using the bracket targeting, it slightly slows your sensitivity. And in my opinion, because this isn't a hit scan game, that doesn't really help you. You have to lead your shots. You have to lead them. So having it slow whenever it's highlighted doesn't really help. If anything, that'll help you miss. So they need to work on their aim assist. If they think it helps people, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't at all. Like, it's overpowered in Paladins. and Smite, it's just simply non-helpful and should be turned off. Alright, so, personally, I don't even use this ruler as helpful as it could be. I don't use it. I think you can kind of just, after a while, you know, kind of eyeball. You can eyeball it, should I say. So, I don't, you can eyeball the distance people are and kind of go from the experience but I could see if you're new or you just really like the ruler and it, you know, makes you like a god at hitting autos why you'd want to use it. So again, also, like I don't want to stress enough, um, feather your shots. Like if we're going to stand back here by the hive and we're going to try to hold right trigger down and hit them. All right. It's kind of hard to hit them. Now let's try uh, uh, feathering each shot. Semi-auto. As you can see, it's a lot more accurate, I, I feel. It is hard to shoot from this range, too, when you're not moving. But you have to understand, when a game starts, you have really slow attack speed. So you're going to want to feather each shot individually like that, you know? And try to anticipate the jukes. And then again, if you're close and you're around the attack speed cap... Sure, why not? Go wild. Hold that trigger down and just let them feel it. Either way, I think that's all I got. This is where I go to practice autos. Personally, I always say I suck with hunters. I'm trying to get good with them right now, but this is where I go to practice auto, auto attacks with hunters. Either way, guys, these control settings, they I think they're all around great, whether you're going to be using a mage, hunter, warrior, assassin. These are all around good controller settings. If you plan on using a controller here in Smite. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.